Here we are doing a little session on whistles. Whistles play a part in signals to communicate your immediate distress and all stuff like that. And we have here the whistle that is made out of strips of aluminum usually, although it can be other. I think the first time I saw this whistle, it was made uh, with uh, uh, cardboard from a player cigarette package. Anyway, we end up with a strip of suitable length which may be, you know, as long as your middle finger or something. You have to juggle this to suit yourself. Your source of aluminum, right off the bat, uh, we use the duct work, the, the stovepipe like pipes that are used in connection with uh, uh, clothes dryers and so on. Uh, here we have taken this piece and broken it into two pieces, with one piece being a quarter to a third the length of the other piece. Usually you leave it together till you need it. Taking the short piece, you end up making a hill, a very regular hill. If it's pointy, it whistle might not work. Therefore, we have made a um, kind of a hill that if you had to walk up it, you could. If you can't walk up it, it might be too steep. And then we end up making the, the whistle by uh, arranging these ends so you know when you fold them that the hill isn't compromised and the hill stays in place by bending the first two bends. Everything's done in the same direction, third bend, all in the same direction, still leaving a good gap to blow in. Then the next step is to fold it very, very hard against the very leading edge of the hill to make it into a seven, and then curl the whistle until you have the appearance of a whistle, phys ed whistle, but the sides have been left out, sort of thing. And so you now line everything. You'll notice when you look at one of these whistles how the jet of air that you blow under that hill you initially made has to be cut by this little edge. And this part here has to be big enough that the fingers can complete the chamber, so-called chamber. To improve on the whistle, you want it large where you come into the, with the air and reduced and flattened so that when you hold the whistle this way, you get that effect. Now if you don't have a ball, like some whistles do, you flutter your tongue. And here we got a whistle that has a ball, I can see it, it's a little cork ball. This was bought in WW Arcade. Boy, that's a long time since WW Arcade. Ah, that's a good whistle. Now this can be made louder by juggling and learning how to make them. By the time you make your 20th whistle, you will have caught on to make these extremely irritating, extremely piercing. There's another one that's very similar. What does it sound like? <coughs> Using your tongue, <coughs> that is, you gotta learn to use your tongue rather than <coughs> and then you start getting the type of uh, sound that can allow you to talk the Morse code. SOS, three dots, dot, 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 O dash 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 and then S again. If you do that, somebody should come running. And if you do that and you don't need help, somebody might get a little unhappy about it. We have a much heavier gauge here, which makes whistles that are much more durable. And the next stage uh, is sometimes siding. And the other uh, suitable material I found is the um, eaves troughs that are made out of aluminum. Now somebody threw a whole bunch away and I found it was uh, not extremely stiff, but a lot stiffer than this light stuff that you get from the conduits for the... So here we get the, again, here is where you develop powerful fingers in bending if you... Uh, if you persist in using this, so it might be impossible for the person who gets your kit to be able to manufacture this. Now here you might not need to fold it, you just pull it and, and you don't have to have that third fold and you create everything the same way. And some people leave out this part altogether and learn how to blow the whistle just by making the lower part. And so here we are actually rebuilding a whistle. <laughs> that, that we There we have everything in there if it's aligned. Um, and if you took this bottom part off, some people will now use that. 
<laughs> but you got to get used to it. I'm not used to it, but I've seen other people do very well just with that arrangement. You play with it. Here we have a wide variety of so-called whistles. Here in this package of this very expensive kit, there's a slim rescue howler. Well, there happens to be another slim rescue howler in this collection. Let's compare the two, except one is Soul Survival Outdoors long, Longer, and this one is Adventure Medical Kits. Now, I have tested whistles, and one day I will just have to come up with the loudest whistle. And that one has a flaw in it somehow, but I guess that's supposed to carry a long way. Although I don't know about this, I think, I think we should line people up every quarter kilometer and see how far these whistles carry. Of all these whistles, this one, which says Acme Thunderer made in England, seems to be the one that sounds the loudest to me. An ancient design, probably already around 150 years ago. <whistles> Anything similar? What does it give us? <whistles> well, those look alike. Oh, this is Coglins. A common whistle is the girl guide whistle, which actually, some of these sound like a, a varied thrush. <coughs> In the evenings, you hear this robin-like bird singing. A lot of people figure it's somebody asking for help. Now, this weird whistle is supposed to be unusually loud, but it's got a, a log in there instead of a spherical ball. But I don't know if that is as good as the more readily available whistles. At any rate, you might be looking for whistles that are very slim. Uh, this was a whistle that was issued with all the life jackets. And I guess dirt gets in there instead of getting three tones. You get the one tone. Oh, I see. It's full of gravel, river gravel and so on. So it's misbehaving, but it's got a um, rescue lifesaver on the cover so at any rate a whistle should be part of your your kit and a little bit of experimentation uh, I am partial to these I don't know they must be in the dollar store and some of them are actually very good that one isn't the one but I have one on one of my other things which we have packed away which uh, I was quite impressed that uh, a very indestructible whistle that uh, is made out of aluminum so it's not subject to fire and so on. The Morse code is easy to learn, but that's another story. Uh, we will uh, say that I've said enough about whistles. We have here one of our videos that are available through Karamat. Uh, here I cover all the natural whistles in the in the bush setting, and these folk toys introduce kids to how to relate and manipulate wilderness materials in order to enjoy things that kids have known about for hundreds of years, perhaps, and so on. Whistles and flutes have been around a long time, and they make uh, anything that makes a noise, kids respond to. So we got a whistle. Willow whistle, a trombone whistle, dandelion stalk whistle, three hole penny whistle, cow parsnip whistles, bugles, and so on. So, if you're wanting to know a lot about the mechanism of the whistle and how to build recorders and flutes, this is something that would help you in the, in the, in something other, it's in live in color in the form of a video. <laughs>